Uh, thanks. Great, so I'll be telling you about Hager flow homology. Uh, so Hager flow homology, it's a package of invariants for three manifolds and knots inside of them. So to a three manifold Y, so let's say that it's closed and oriented, we'll associate a chain complex Um, so this is, say, either a vector space or a module endowed with a differential that squares to zero. Uh, the chain complex itself depends on your choice of description for Y, but the chain homotopy type of um, this chain complex is an invariant of Y. So in particular, you can take the homology. Uh, so take the homology of this chain complex. Uh, and that's an invariant of your three manifold. And so this is defined by, it's too close. Okay, can you, people can still hear me? Okay, great, thanks. Um, so this is defined by uh, Ausroth and Zabo. Um, <coughs> And in general, uh, in general, it's pretty difficult to compute this from the definition, um, but for certain special families of manifolds, this may be tricks about how you can compute this. And now also, there's a knot invariant. So, uh, so we'll be interested in, say, knots in S3. Uh, we associate a chain complex uh, we'll call CFK. Um, and again, the chain complex itself is going to depend on how you describe your knot, but the chain homotopy type is going to be an invariant. So if you take the homology, uh, that's going to be a knot invariant. So this is defined by Ajvath and Sabo. And independently, uh, Jake Rasmussen, who you heard from last week. Great, and so um, what's special about this knot invariant? Um, so there's, there's sort of different, there's different uh, flavors of it, but if you look at the simplest flavor of it, um, we'll call that HFK hat. Uh, so this is a bi-graded vector space. And if you take the graded Euler characteristic of this vector space, well, you get the Alexander polynomial. So in particular, we say that this uh, categorifies the Alexander polynomial. And um, so I guess last week you learned some properties of the Alexander polynomial. In particular, you saw that the Alexander polynomial gives you a bound in the genus of the knot. Um, I guess one half the degree of the Alexander polynomial is a lower bound for the genus of K. And it turns out, well, not floor homology actually um, dramatically improves this. Not floor homology actually detects the genus. Uh, this is due to Ashwath and Sabo. Right, and so since the unknot is the only knot with genus zero, well, that tells you that not flow homology actually can detect the unknot, right? So <coughs> basically that says that if some knot has the same not flow homology as the unknot, well, it has to actually be the unknot. Uh, I guess you also saw that the Alexander polynomial um, can obstruct fiberness in the sense that if K is fibered, then the Alexander polynomial is monic. Um, and again, Knopfler homology uh, improves this in the sense that Knopfler homology detects fibredness. So it can, Knopfler homology can tell, you, can tell you if you're not as fibered. Uh, this is due to uh, Gugini and me. Great. Um, Maybe one other question you're wondering is you might be wondering, well, what's the is there a relationship between the knot invariant and the three-manifold three invariant? Uh, and there is. <coughs> so in particular, uh, the invariant uh, CFK, uh, this actually determines uh, the Hager flow homology for any surgery on your knot. So this is due to Ajvath and Zabo. 
Uh, so by Sn of k, what I mean is I mean n surgery on k, so that means uh, remove a tubular neighborhood of k and glue it back in such that an n frame longitude bounds a disk. Great. So, so today I'm going to tell you about uh, how we're going to describe our three manifolds that are knots, and that's going to be sort of the, the input into this machine that's going to spit out a chain complex. Tomorrow I'm going to tell you about the three manifold invariant. Thursday I'll tell you about the knot invariant. And then on Friday I'll talk about um, this relationship between the knot invariant and the uh, Hager flow homology of surgery on a knot. Great. All right. So what I want to tell you now is how we're going to describe our three manifolds. So question. So how do we describe our three manifold y? And then the answer is going to be something called Hagar diagrams. And that's where the Hagar part of the term Hagar flow comes from. So let me begin with a definition. A genus G handle body uh, is a neighborhood of a wedge of G circles. Uh, you should think of them as uh, in, in Rn, in R3, I mean. Great. So let me draw a picture. Great, so here's a wedge of three circles, and then um, here's a genus three handle body. Equivalently, you can think about it as um, a three ball together with uh, handles attached. So. Uh, so these, these are homeomorphic. And now, a Hagard splitting of a three manifold Y is, well, it's a decomposition of Y as a union of two handle bodies. Um, so it is decomposition. So Y is going to be uh, the union of two handle bodies. So it's H1 glued together uh, with H2 via F. So here, H1 and H2 are handle bodies, and F is going to be, uh, let's say, an orientation reversing diffeomorphism from the boundary of H1 to the boundary of H2. Orientation reversing uh, diffeomorphism. Great. And then um, the genus of the Hagar splitting is just the, gen uh, it's just the genus of H1 or H2. They have to have the same genus since their boundaries are homeomorphic. So let's look at some examples of Hagar splittings. <coughs> Great. So if you think about uh, S3 as R3 together with a point at infinity. Well, you can think about S3 as a union of two three balls. Um, I guess that's a Hagar splitting of genus zero. Uh, S3 also has a Hagar splitting of genus uh, one. Um, Great, so if you think about S3 as R3 together with a point at infinity, <coughs> well, let's take one of, so you can take the z-axis together with a point at infinity, it's going to be a circle, 
And so you take a neighborhood of that, well, that's going to be a solid torus. And then if you think about the complement of that, well, that's also going to be a solid torus. Um, so maybe the picture looks something like this. Uh, so here's your z-axis, together with the point infinity that gives you a circle, and then a uh, neighborhood of that is going to be a solid torus like this. And then the complement is this solid torus here. And that gives us S3. Great. OK, so that's uh, a genus 1 Hegard splitting of S3. Uh, you can also, uh, there's also a genus 2 splitting, a Hegard splitting of S3. Um, Great, so here's a, a genus 2 handle body. And then if you think about the complement of this, sort of just think of this as sitting in R3, and then, well, the complement of this, take a neighborhood of the point at infinity. That's going to be a ball. And then imagine, I'm going to describe for you a genus 2 handle body. So you have this uh, ball. It's a neighborhood of a, of, a point at, of a point at infinity, together with a handle that sort of goes through. Um, you get sort of one hand. Uh, so you have this ball at infinity together with the handle going through here and the handle going through here. And that gives us a genus 2 Hagard splitting um, of S3. And then maybe as an exercise, you could imagine a genus G Hagard splitting for S3. Great. Um, and then maybe another example, um, the lens space LPQ. Uh, uh, I guess depending on your definition of a lens space, um, oh, sorry, this is uh, this is um, uh, maybe your definition of a lens space is something that can be described as a union of two solid tori, and so sort of exactly how you glue together your two solid tori is telling you which lens space you're going to get. So why are Hagard splittings going to be useful to us? Well, they're going to be useful to us because every uh, closed-oriented three-manifold admits a Hagard splitting. So theorem, every closed-oriented three-manifold admits a Hagard splitting. Prove this. Okay, so uh, we'll we'll assume that um, all three manifolds can be triangulated. So let's take a triangulation of Y. <coughs> Wait. Okay, and now uh, let H one be a neighborhood of the one skeleton. Right, the one skeleton, well, that's just going to be a graph. So a neighborhood of a graph, well, that's, gonna, that's a handle body. <coughs> and now the claim is, well, if that's one of our handle bodies, well, the other handle body should just be the complement of this. So the claim is that uh, y minus h1 is also a handle body. Great, and then the proof of the claim well, uh, y minus h1, this is just uh, is the neighborhood of the dual one skeleton. Right, so what's the dual one skeleton? It's the one skeleton you get where the vertices are, come, are the centers of the tetrahedra, and then the edges, you get one edge for each uh, face. Uh, it's sort of perpendicular to each face. So maybe, uh, maybe I'll draw a picture. Right, so here's maybe a tetrahedron. And then uh, dual to that, well, the dual one skeleton, you get a, 
a vertex uh, in the center of the tetrahedron, and then you get an edge uh, perpendicular to each face. And so uh, that completes the proof. Right. So if a three manifold has a Hagrid splitting, <coughs> and so a Hagrid splitting, well, it's two, two handle bodies together with a diffeomorphism between their boundaries. Um, and how we, but how we, we want a way to describe these Hagrid splittings. And so we're going to do that with something called a Hagrid diagram. So what's the Hager diagram? <coughs> um, before I define a Hager diagram, I'm going to give, uh, give a way to describe sort of a, a way to sort of describe a handle body. Um, so definition, a set of attaching circles uh, for a handle body H. Uh, so let's say the genus of our handle body is G. Is it's a set of G simple closed curves, so we'll call them gamma one to gamma G. Um, where do these curves live? They're going to live in the boundary of H, uh, such that they're going to satisfy uh, three conditions. So the first condition is that these curves are going to be uh, pairwise disjoint. Uh, so the gamma i. a pairwise disjoint. The second condition is that if we look at the complement of the gamma i, so sigma minus gamma 1 and minus gamma g, we want this to be connected. And then third condition is that uh, each gamma i bounds um, an embedded disk, bounds a disk. So that's a set of attaching circles. So let me give you some examples. Great. So uh, here's a handle body of genus 2. It's a neighborhood of a wedge of two circles. <coughs> and well, this curve bounds a disk. And this curve also bounds a disk. Uh, they are both they're disjoint. Their complement is connected, and each bounds a disk. This is a set of attaching circles. Um, maybe another example. Well, if I take this curve and this curve, well, these also both bound disks. So this is, this is another set of attaching circles for this handle body. OK. And in fact, well, if I just gave you this, this surface together with these two curves, that actually describes the handle body for you. In fact, I can, I, can, I can rebuild the handle body from just the data of the surface together with these two curves. Right, so how do I do that? <coughs> um, so we can build H by, uh, so first let's uh, thicken sigma to sigma across the interval. And now let's attach thickened disks along uh, gamma i cross 0. So in terms of, say, this picture, right? so I have this surface. So thicken your surface. 
and now um, a long surface class zero, so we'll think about that maybe that as like the inside, uh, attach a thickened disk along each of these curves. So I'm attaching a thickened disk along each of these curves. And now it's an exercise that since these were attaching circles, in particular since their complement was connected, if you notice here, what's left on the inside, <coughs> well, the, um, what's left on the inside, that boundary is homeomorphic to S2, right? It's sort of, we follow along here, you can see that that's homeomorphic to S2. So in particular, well, you can <coughs> uh, fill in uh, the resulting S2 boundary with a three ball. So, great. So, in particular, if you just sort of fill in what's left here with a three ball, well, we've sort of we've like built our built our original handle body for which these were attaching circles. Similarly, you can check that if you do the same procedure here. Um, Great, so you attach a disk here and attach a disk here. Well, again, because these were attaching circles, you can check that the boundary that was left is S2, and so there's a, and there's a unique way to uh, fill that in with a, with a three ball, right? Your three ball is going to sort of live here. Great, so if you just, so the point is, I just handed an abstract surface together with the attaching circles. Well, it actually tells you, uh, it allows you to sort of rebuild the handle body. Um, that you had. Yes? Um, how do I know if they're attaching circles when I, or uh, attaching curves when I don't know if they define the disk? Oh, oh, so the way I define this, I, uh, in this definition of a set of attaching circles, you had the handle body, and then you described the um, right. curves in the boundary. The around, right? Oh. How do I know? So the other, the other way around is. I know if the curves are allowed. Uh, so you're starting with. The, with the surface. Uh -huh. How do I get the handle body? Oh, you get the handle body. Um, by this procedure. Yeah, but there, what is the body? I don't know. So this third requirement. Uh huh. How can I check it without knowing? Oh, so when when you build the handle body, you're like you're like you're making, you're making it satisfy this condition because you put the discs in. Okay. They. That's right. When you yeah. Reverse, you don't impose the third. That's right. But sort of the third gets imposed by by construction right. exactly. Oh. Uh, yeah, I guess here I'm requiring the surface. Yeah, my surface, everything's connected. Everything's connected. Yeah, I guess I didn't say that. Other questions? Great. Okay. All right, so now we're ready to define a Hagar diagram. So. A Hager diagram for, so let's say we already have a Hager splitting of our manifold Y. Uh, so this is, it's a triple surface comma uh, uh, alpha comma beta. So I'll tell you what each of these are. So sigma is a, is a uh, closed, connected, oriented surface of genus G. Um, alpha is a G tuple of curves, uh, alpha one through alpha G. And what are these? Well, this is going to be a set of attaching circles for the handle body H1. And similarly, uh, beta is going to be a set of attaching circles for H2. Okay. 
So let me give you some examples of Hagar diagrams. Um, great, and then, so there is a convention in the field that alpha curves are always red and beta curves are always blue. So we will stick to that convention. Um, great, okay. Oh, uh, say that again. No. 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 I'll, I'll give some examples, and maybe that will that will help. Um, great. Okay. So let's look at the. So we described the genus one Hagard splitting for S three earlier. Great, and so right, so we sort of thought of that, we sort of saw, we had this solid torus, or the one you see sitting here, and then the complementary solid torus was a, a neighborhood of the z-axis together with the point at infinity. So for this, um, for this solid torus that we sort of see here, well, okay, well this curve bounds a disk. Um, and now, well for the complementary solid torus, uh, this curve, this curve bounds a disk. So this is a Hager diagram for S3. <coughs> Great. Um, I guess we also described a genus two Hager splitting for S3, which was sort of this, sort of the obvious, the handle body you see, sort of the natural one bounded by the surface, and then sort of the complementary one. And so, uh, well, in this, in this handle body here, these curves bound disks, and in the complementary one, well, these curves bound disks. Um, great, and so just, just like the attaching, um, the attaching circle sort of told us how to, how to build a handle body, well, a Hagar diagram also tells us how to build a three manifold um, in, in basically, by basically this same, this same procedure. Right, so what, and if you want to build your, if you want to build your three manifold, if you're given just the Hager diagram, and you want to be able to build your three manifold, <coughs> well, what should you do? Um, so, Y can be sort of reconstructed from the Hager diagram as follows. Uh, so, you first uh, thicken your surface to sigma cross i. Great. And so now, well, uh, let's attach thickened disks um, along uh, alpha, the alpha cross zero. So for example, in this picture here, okay, well, we'll attach a thickened disk along here. <coughs> and now we'll do the same thing for the betas, except that for those, we'll do it on the other side. Um, so we'll attach thickened disks along the beta i cross one. Um, so in these pictures, maybe you think about you attach thickened disks along the alpha curves on the inside, and then along the beta curves on the outside. And then just like bef uh, analogous to before, well now we're gonna have two boundary components, and both of them are gonna be S2. We'll get an S2 on the inside, an S2 on the outside. So for each of those, you can cap those off with a, with a three ball. So, uh, resulting boundary is uh, S2, disjoint union S2. Um, uh, so, fill each with a three ball. Great, so here, <coughs> Right, when you fill in sort of the inside boundary of the three ball, you get back this inside solid torus, and then you fill in the outside, that's sort of giving you the three ball, that's a neighborhood of the point at infinity. Great. 
Um, maybe let me give you one more example of a Hagar diagram. Um, here's a Hagar diagram for uh, RP3. Great, so as I said, this is our alpha curve, and then here's our beta curve. Um, and so for, for technical reasons, we're going to need a base point. So we're just going to put a base point somewhere in the complement of the alpha and beta circles. So maybe a base point here, W. Great. So. For technical reasons, <coughs> um, add a base point W that should live in the complement of the alpha and beta circles. Great. And so I guess now, now our Hagar diagrams are going to be a quadruple, uh, sigma, our alpha circles, our beta circles, and our base point W. All right. So as we've seen, <coughs> But you can have different you can have different Hager diagrams that describe the same three manifold. But a natural question to ask is, well, is there some is there some if you have two Hager diagrams to describe the same three manifold, is there some relationship between those Hager diagrams? Great. So now I want to describe so. Motivated by that question, now I want to describe for you Hagard moves. Great. All right. Are there any, before I move on, are there any questions? Yes. Can I maybe elaborate why that's RP3? I guess it depends on how you describe RP3, right? So if you think of RP3 as L21, and then if you think about lens spaces as two solid tori glued together along um, with the appropriate uh, identification of their torus boundaries, um, then maybe you can see that this is, this is RP3. Great, all right. Uh, so in order to describe these Hagar moves, uh, let's let uh, gamma 1 through gamma g be a set of attaching circles for h. So a set of attaching circles for uh, handle body h. 